Ride through the city like Brennan Shop. I'm on a mission to get it all. Ride through the city like Brennan Shop. If you ain't thick, please don't get involved. And now, Brandon Thick Boy Shop. What is up, fam? Monday, December 12th. It is the morning here in Calabasas, California. What's poppin', everybody? Good? Uh, for all you L.A. folks out there, don't worry. Your car will not melt in the rain, so don't drive like it, all right? Do, stop driving like that. Let's tighten up. Let's tighten up, L.A. A little rain's not going to melt your car. Let's just drive like normal. Took an hour to get the kiddos to school. Be cool. Be cool. Your boy's coming fresh off a busy weekend. Two Calabasas Fight Companions. Friday night was Rough and Rowdy Barstool, Calabasas Fight Companion. Uh, Rough and Rowdy 19 in Providence, Rhode Island, and we had one heck of a time. I paired up um, an unusual pair of gentlemen for this crew because Rough and Rowdy, obviously it's not UFC specific, so um, I lined up Adam 22, Rampage Jackson, Teddy Swims, and Donald Cowboy Cerrone. Um, I mean, Rampage is my boy. Me and Cowboy go way back. Adam and I are boys. Um, we're not that close, though, but obviously he's a professional podcaster. He's one of the biggest in the game. And then Teddy Swims is the voice of a thick angel with tattoos on his face. And uh, Teddy started drinking that tequila, and Teddy started just going. Teddy was going. Teddy was going. And the one takeaway from that show is Rampage is not like his butt played with. That is a fact. Uh, <clears throat> it was a fun time. And that, uh, you know, if you would have told me the rough and rowdy card would have been better than the main card in the UFC pay-per-view, I would have called you a liar. But that was the case. That was the case. The rough and rowdy had more entertainment and uh, was more fun, quote-unquote, to watch than the main card in the UFC. Um both companions were fun. It's just you're talking about pick your poison. You're talking about whiskey and tequila. Pick your poison. They're both good, but uh, whichever one you like. And then Saturday night for UFC 282, I had the great Sam Tripoli. Um, I had the obviously the my partner in crime, Brian the Kid Callen, and then also um, a guy I've, I've known forever too is uh, Frank Grillo, who's a legit straight up movie star. So. Um, you know, it was it was just completely different, completely different polar opposites, both fun. They're available right now on Thick Boy YouTube. You can watch the Rough and Rowdy Barstool Fight Companion, and then also the UFC 282 Calbass Fight Companion. And uh, they're both different. They're both fun. They're available right now on Thick Boy. And uh, it was just a fun week. It's my favorite show of all time to do. So um, shout out to Joe Rogan for giving me the blessing to do that show because it's one of the highlights of my life these days. So I had such a good time. Um, <clears throat> but let's get right into it. Um, I'm gonna break down rough and rowdy all 20 fights. Just kidding. <laughs> Just playing fam. Obviously there's a lot of controversy going on right now with the uh, UFC 282 for a variety of reasons, but this card seems to be overshadowed, um, with the decision of Patty Pimlet cause he's a, the most famous guy in the card B, um, the controversy of his unanimous decision win over Jared Gordon. Um, and even that takes over kind of notoriety, takes over, um, especially in the in the headlines, over the light heavyweight title fight over Jan Blakovich and Magomed, you know, because that was a draw. And um, so right now, if you look at the, the headlines, the majority of it's going to be Patty Pimlet, um, you know, was gifted a decision over Jared Gordon. I do not aligned with that and what i think um before i get into that the card was fantastic before the main card the main card wasn't bad right so we kind of base a pay-per-view card off the main event so when the main events like that kind of takes this the wind out of the sails of of the the hype machine ship so a lot of people go oh, the card sucked i, I don't, i'm not going to go as far and say it sucked because the first three fights uh, you had finishes. You had finishes, and uh, Duplessis and Darren Till was probably fight of the night. And then to kick off the main card, you had Bryce Mitchell and Topo Toporia, and Toporia had a coming out party. Had a coming out party, and put it on Bryce Mitchell. Toporia was your probably your MVP of the night there. 
Taporia put his name in that hat, and you know he can hang with those those top top eight guys. Now you see the skill set on Taporia, who's undefeated. Bryce Mitchell also undefeated. People tend to forget though, and I don't know why. And I always thought about this when I was a fighter too. They never. I mean, I could tell you logistically why, but you know, Bryce Mitchell was submitted on the Ultimate Fighter, so he does have a loss on his technical his resume. That fight actually happened, but because the commission. Those fights are only two rounds. That's the way the UFC gets out of, you know, the news getting out, so it ruins the show. So by making it two rounds, it doesn't make it an official fight, so they don't have to announce the results. Because it's an official fight, the results would be out. It ruined the show of Ultimate Fighter, especially back then. Um, they are worried about views and stuff like that. Now, not so much. Now they could just do the thing, right? Nobody's really fallen Ultimate Fighter these days. Um, so <clears throat> I've seen Bryce Mitchell lose before, and he came back and – you know, went on a crazy streak and he became who he is now, this phenomenal grappler. And so this isn't anything new for Bryce Mitchell. He, he's obviously going to have to go back to the drawing board. Obviously, stand-up is an issue. You know, you'll hear a lot of experts say you can't be, you know, dominant in one thing these days in the UFC. I completely disagree with that. You can be dominant, but you have to be a, a an outlier dominant. You have to be a... Khabib dominant, dominant. You have to be a uh, an Izzy dominant in striking. So Khabib, in regards to grappling, he's so dominant. He doesn't need to work on anything else. He's such an outlier. He doesn't have to work on his striking, which he did. But to be, the majority of his wins, and by majority I mean all of them. Obviously, he caught Connor with the right hand because no one expected. It, but for the majority of his entire career, he was such an outlier. He's so far ahead of the game. Was so dominant in grappling. He could be uh, kind of one-sided. Izzy, too, when it comes to striking, he's an outlier there, and then obviously things catch up with you. With Bryce Mitchell, he is definitely a one percent when it comes to grappling, but his wrestling's not 1%. And as you get to the higher level, it that's going to be tough. If you're just a specialist, but you're not an outlier specialist, it's going to catch up with you, and it did on Saturday night against Taporia, and we saw that was a dominant, dominant win by Taporia, and that was his coming out party. Uh, with uh, Duplessis and Darren Till, <clears throat> I was rooting for Darren Till, rooting for Darren Till for a variety of reasons. I know it's like to go on a losing streak, not the losing streak he's on, but I know it's like to lose you know, two fights in a row, and you think you know, you got to go back to your old ways, and you think by changing camps, it's going to be this new thing, and in camp you're dominating guys, you're like, I'm back, and then you get in there. Um, and you're questioning yourself, was it the right move? And there's on, only one way to find out, and it's very black and white, and how you look inside that octagon. And it's not that Darren Till looked bad. That first round looked awful, right? That first round, you're like, well, this is – Darren Till's going to get cut. He was getting mollywopped. Um, he got beat up so bad that Duplessis kind of wastes his gas tank. And credit, kudos to Darren Till. And because of the training, this is what I was telling Cal, and Cal's like, yeah, Till doesn't look in shape. I'm like, dude – Trust me, nobody trained harder on this entire card than Darren Till. He is ready to go when it comes to that. That's one thing you never have to worry about, Darren Till, being prepared. His preparation is almost too much. The kid's going to be ready to go. And that showed in that second round, and it showed a little bit of, I don't want to say vintage Darren Till, because the vintage Darren Till, the gorilla, would have starched Duplessis in that second round. A guy who's on his back foot, looking like a Jersey Shore, you know, brawler he would have lit that dude up and got him out of there darren till thing is mental it's all mental and he he even alluded to it on his instagram he went live i think from the locker room saying i don't know what it is i train my ass off i'm a monster in training i just can't pull the trigger that's all mental sounds like he needs a mental coach who knows i feel for the guy i'm rooting for him um it was fire of the night uh i don't think duplicis in that first round he looked like a world beater and then after that you know i it gets a little tough for him. Um, but Darren Till should have got him out of there in the second round. Vintage Darren Till would have got him out of there. That's all I'm saying. Um, Ponsonibio, Alex Morano. Morano had that fight, especially taking on that short notice. You can see when they read the decision, he goes, I, I gave that fight away, and he did. Uh, Ponsonibio probably shouldn't have won that fight. So let's get to the co-main event and the main event. So <clears throat> with the co-main event with Patty Pimblett and uh, Jared Gordon, um, I told you guys on last week's show, I said this on the on the fight campaign with Brian Callen, Sam Triple, and Frank Grillo, that this is Patty Pimlet's toughest test. And to me, it was almost too much too soon because if you look at Patty and his experience in the UFC, 
he's he's beating guys, right? He's beating guys, but he, he's getting hit, and you can see some holes in his game. And he has the personality, and he has the work ethic, and he has the look, and he checks every single box. But Patty, currently, as I'm sitting down talking to you guys right now, whether you're on your driving to work or you know you're at home with the kids or you're running around doing errands, whatever you're doing as you're listening to this, Patty right now isn't a top 10 guy at 155. He's just not. As bad as you want him to be, he's not. And I don't think Patty has gone out and called out those top 10 guys, you know, but um, Patty is an exciting prospect. And unfortunately, he's getting the same treatment. I hate to do this, compare the two, because, you know, it is different apples to oranges, but it is the fight game. He's getting the same treatment that Jake Paul is getting, where when a guy gets too much notoriety, it's in the DNA of MMA fans, in the DNA of, you know, the inbreds or the, the haters on social media to bring those guys down. When you think it's not deserved, there's nothing that triggers people more. So even though I think Patty gets everything that's coming his way, and I, I would argue that too with Jake Paul, for Patty, you there seems to be this narrative online. I want you guys to pay attention to the, the headlines. If you look at the headlines right now, it is the cool thing to do to hate on Patty Pimlet. The cool thing to do, the thing that's going to get you views, the thing that's going to get you clicks that and even some of the biggest MMA journalists in the world are going to follow the same protocol. The move right now is to tear down Patty Pimlet. I won't be part of it. There's no reason for it. Patty doesn't control the judges. Patty can only control what he can control, and that is fighting. And Patty went out there and gave his best effort. And the three judges that Patty has nothing to do with decided that he won the fight. Whether you think he should have won or not, Patty cannot control that. That is not on Patty. So instead of taking your hate out on Patty Pimlet, even if you're a Jared Gordon fan or you're just a Patty hater, your hatred should really go towards the judging of the UFC. That The problem is not a Patty Pimlet problem. It's not a Jan Magomed problem. It's a UFC problem. It's the judging. It's the judging the criteria based off an old model so the common... Uh, casual fan could understand is based off a of boxing criteria and then they kind of manipulate it so it works for mma but it didn't come from our own foundations even though big john mccartney did the rules and stuff like that when it comes to the judging that is based off an old school criteria that's been around for damn near over 100 years based off boxing so the common fan could understand the judging scoring these 10 9 rounds the 10 8 rounds right but that's based off a of very, uh, uh, it's not simple. When it comes to boxing, boxing is a sweet science. And obviously there's a lot that goes into boxing. But boxing is way more easier to understand than mixed martial arts and educating the fan base on mixed martial arts because there's so much that goes into mixed martial arts. It's mixed martial arts. Boxing is one part of that criteria. Yet you're using an old dinosaur judging system that's kind of manipulated to fit in so people can understand the judging. It makes no sense. But back to Patty. I'll get to the judge in a second. Back to Patty. Let's take a little break from me chatting your ear off about the fight game because it is the season to clean your balls. My friends at Manscaped are helping you clear your driveway for safe travels this holiday season. From stocking stuffers to white elephants, Manscaped's products are at the top of every wish list. Grab some crop mops for your pops or the body buffer for the holiday lover. Win this year's white elephant gift and help all the bros in your life go from eggnog to nice hog this December and save 20% off and free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash shop, S-C-H-A-U-B. Man, Manscaped is a one-stop shop for all your holiday needs. They got the perfect gift for all the men's in your life, for your grandma with them hairy shoulders and the mustache. We're talking about that Platinum Package 4.0. It, they have loads of little presents that make the perfect stocking stuffer. All right? That freaking Platinum Package 4.0 comes with the lawnmower, comes with the shears to clip them toenails. You also got Preserve Cologne, the body buffer. They got it all, man. This is where else you're going to go. 
Where else are you going to go? Save 20% off and free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash shop. That's right. 20% off and free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash S-C-H-A-U-B. Manscaped for a perfect gift that will be the holiday's biggest hit. Manscaped. This holiday season, the best deal in wireless can only be found at Mint Mobile. Right now, when you switch to Mint Mobile, buy any three-month plan, you'll get another three months free as the first company to sell premium wireless service online only. They cut out the middleman. Mint Mobile lets you order and activate from home with an eSIM card, all right, while saving tons on phone plans. Start at just 15 buckaroos. I've been using Mint Mobile long before this holiday deal. I have to say it's the perfect gift, all right? You can buy three months. You get three months free. It makes a great gift. Maybe your kid after he's 16, 17 years old, he's been begging you for a phone. Now is the cheapest, best way to get it done. Mint Mobile's best offer of the year is here. For limited time, buy any three-month plan and get three more months free. That's six months. What? But you're only paying for three. By going online with the eSIM and eliminating the traditional cost of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. All right, all plans come with unlimited talk and text, high-speed data delivered on nation's largest 5G network. Use your phone that you're currently using with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily. It's so easy to do with the eSIM card. Or if you need a new device for a limited time, get six months of free service when you buy a select device and plan. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless starting at 15 buckaroos. For limited time, buy any three-month Mint Mobile plan and get three months free by going to mintmobile.com slash shop, S-C-H-A-B. That's mintmobile.com slash shop. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash shop. This episode of the Shop Show, breaking down Patty Pimlet, all the controversy of UFC 282 pay-per-view is brought to you by my friends at Rogue Nicotine. I love Rogue Nicotine. You guys know this. I use pouches every day. I have some in my mouth currently. You see the freaking cans on my desk. Everywhere I go, Rogue Nicotine is with me. My favorite flavor is the apple, but you can get them in all sorts of delicious flavors, like the wintergreen, the peppermint, to mango, to citrus, to berry. They got it all. That's why I chose them, because their flavor is intense, and I can't get enough Rogue also makes other great products like gum, tablets, lozenges. I love that I can take anywhere I want. Flights, comedy clubs, no restrictions. Rogue is my go-to source for nicotine. I absolutely love it. I ask them to be part of the show because I use their product so much. If you want to try these pouches like me or the gums or tablets, everyone get your nicotine. Go to roguenicotine.com. Use promo code ROGUE20 for 20% off your order. That's 20% off your entire order when you go to the Freaking rogue nicotine.com, rogue 20 for 20% off your order. All right. Underage sales prohibited. Warning the product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. For more information, visit rogue nicotine.com. So, again, you're going to see in the headlines, and right now it, it's kind of the nickelback effect, right? Somewhere along the lines, and people blame it on the, uh, the movie with Seth, Seth Rogen, 40 year old virgin, where he goes, You know how I know you're gay? You listen to nickelback. And for whatever reason, that became a free pass to hate on Nickelback. Now, Nickelback has a massive fan base. You look up the record sales, obviously people like Nickelback. But online is a different world, you know, and the same goes for Machine Gun Kelly. Somewhere along the lines, it was okay to go at these guys and be really mean to them, and we all accepted it, right? It was just something that, Social media thought, this is the guy to go for. Let's go for him and try and tear him down. With Nickelback, Patty Pimlet right now. And you're going to see in the headlines with some major outlets that will try and paint this narrative that Patty may be a bad guy or Patty's racist or Patty this. or Patty. They will go for any little chink in the arm to try to devalue Patty Pimlet. Any you're gonna see, you're gonna see outrageous headlines coming up. You're gonna see you know Jared Gordon was robbed and uh, Patty Pimlet doesn't deserve this and this and all this and you know Patty's the most overrated fighter of all time and he's the next Sage North cut and what I see oh he's the next Ronda Rousey which that I wouldn't get into that's so insane to for comparison saying she's overrated it's just uneducated but you're gonna see this narrative that it's okay to hate on Patty Pimlet. How old is Patty? 26? I think Patty's 26. 27. So Patty is a 27 year old kid. He grew up 
loving Diego Sanchez and Clay Guida on Ultimate Fighter 9. But the internet thinks it's a cool thing to do to try to bring this kid down, and he has nothing to do with it. He, has, he goes out there, he put his heart on his sleeve, he tried his best to beat Jared Gordon, whether you think he won or lost. It doesn't really matter because we're not judges, and at the end of the day in the record books and the way he goes in the rankings, it doesn't really matter. But you guys are so mad at Patty. You're so mad at Patty. He has nothing to do with that judging. But again, it's the Nickelback, Bieber, you know, kind of effect where somewhere along the lines, it became the cool thing to do to hate on Patty Pimlet. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Because when you look at this fight, again, pay attention to the narratives in the media and the way these journalists and MMA outlets, because they know it's going to get clicks, watch how toxic, how awful how evil it is the way they're going to try to manipulate the system and sway you guys one way to be anti-patty i will never understand it it's uh, it's it breaks my heart a 27 year old kid who's reached his dreams and his dream is to become a world champion the amount of hate that is headed his way right now even a guy in sugar which he's a little different he'll troll and do his stuff and he likes that with patty i'm telling you i've sat down with you name it everybody Patty is a sweet human being. He's a good kid who's trying his fucking best. And for whatever reason, something that he's doing is triggering you guys. Maybe you think he doesn't deserve it or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. That does not warrant the type of backlash that he's getting right now. It doesn't make sense to me. And when you talk about robbery, let's talk about robbery. If the MMA media and the MMA fan base will use this term. He was robbed. Jared Gordon was robbed. He wasn't robbed. The, the, Anybody with an educated eye for mixed martial arts in the sport could score this for Patty. Now, do I wholeheartedly think Patty won that fight? Man, it's tough. You him the first round, I guess he was the aggressor, uh, lent some shots, um, his submission attempt, even though it wasn't really close, especially on a level, the, the, the level of uh, jiu-jitsu that Jaron Gordon is. Probably not that close, but still an attempt, a dominant attempt of finishing uh, move to kind of end the fight. Um, but you could, there's argument you give Patty the first round, second round. Definitely argument. You look at the, the compu strike numbers. I can see it. I can see an argument for Patty. Do I think he won the fight? Gun to the head? Tough. 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 But do I think he was robbed? Do I think Jared Gordon was robbed? Or you're going to see in the headlines, guarantee you see this biggest robbery in UFC history. You know how insane that is? You have you ever seen, and now you're talking about a life changing decision. You ever seen GSP Johnny Hendricks? That would be a robbery. A robbery would be a guy who clearly beat the hell out of the guy, and they give the other guy a 10 8 round, which they make no, it makes no sense. Uh, a Canelo and a Triple G would be a robbery, and there's some inside work going on there. there there's things like that. that. That's a robbery. This is a close fight where. There are some educated minds out there who know the game who could score it for Patty Pimlet. And also the fan base can also go, ah, it was a close fight. If ever it's up for debate, there's a close round, you don't really know how to score it. Maybe that first round, even though Patty was the aggressor, but Patty was getting hit with that left hook. He was taking bigger shots, but Patty was more active. You can see how the judges can kind of be swayed Patty's way. To say it's a robbery, again, it's this narrative. And it, you're going to see, it, it's like the, uh, the, the kid in school, if you've ever seen Mean Girls, you, see, you find one, one weak link, and then it becomes cool to tag, to tag team that kid and, and bully that kid and get more people to do it. And everyone, everyone, come on, look at this, look at this kid, this kid. And for what? Love to hear it. For what? Why don't you like him? What is it? Love to hear it. Love to hear it. Doesn't really talk shit. If the guy talks shit, he'll, he'll do his thing. But, you know, he's not polarizing. He's not saying awful, hateful things. It's the fight game. So two fires talk stuff to each other. That's fine. If you're a fan of Jared Gordon, that's fine. But this just, when this fight was a controversial decision, this opened up the floodgates. Go, all right, now we have a reason to go after this kid. I just don't get it. A 27-year-old kid who's trying his best. Now, to that point, is Patty Pimlet a top 10 guy? No, he's not. 
Nor is he saying he is. Nor is his management saying he is. Is he asking for a title shot? No. And if I'm the UFC, I look at Patty Pillman's performance, and I, from the jump, thought, oof, don't like this form. Not yet. What's the rush? Well, the rush is is because he's such a big figure in the in the UFC that they want him, they want to catapult him to the top and him to be the face of the UFC. And, you know, European uh, MMA, especially in the UFC, is blowing up right now. And we haven't had a big face, you know, as big as Leon Edwards is and some of these other guys and Darren Till, Patty Pillman's more famous than those guys. So maybe that's what triggers you. But, you know, the UFC wants him to be that guy. But after watching the fight, whether you think you won or lost, let's say the UFC and their on their, let's say they're in the back and they're meeting today and they go, how many people thought Patty won? Even if every person in that room during the marketing meeting raises their hand, you have to look at that with a critical eye and go, he's not ready yet. He's not ready for the, for the big boys yet. He has a lot of work to do, especially on the feet, right? And with the grappling, even though the submission attempt was good, with his wrestling, there's work to be done there. And that's okay. That's okay. This is also why Ed Swores, who's one of the greatest man managers of all time, goes, do not come to the UFC unless you're ready to be a top 10 guy. Unless you can fight anybody and find a way to win in the top 10, there are no warm-up fights in the UFC. But here we are. And we've seen the UFC over time learn from their mistakes where I do think they made a mistake with Darren Till, who has all the talent in the world, but they pushed him too fast, too soon. That was also a British fighter. They push him too fast, too soon, put him in Woodley and freaking Liverpool, and it's just, all this pressure on him, he gets knocked out, and then they keep throwing him monsters because they thought he'd bounce back, and he hasn't, and they've broke their toy. They, they broke Darren Till mentally, and I don't know if there's coming back from that. I don't know. I hope so, but he looks like he's struggling with that. So they've learned from that, and you see what they're doing with Sugar Sean. He, even though his last fight against Peter Yan, I get it. That was a huge step up. Did he pass the test? I would say, even if he thought he lost that fight, still showed he's a top five guy. But he had a lot more warm-up fights than Patty has had. So I'm in the UFC. I'm looking at that Jared Gordon fight going, we got to be careful on the next fight. We, can, we, he's not, we can't give him top 15 guy. Hey, whoever makes the rankings, don't put him in the top 15. I don't think they will. But, you know, there is this pressure to throw these guys to the freaking wolves. You know, same thing with the, the Jake Paul Oh, I'd like to see him fight Canelo. He has six fights. Canelo, are you out of your goddamn mind? Who in the world would do that? That makes sense. But then we live in this world where if a person's fame gets bigger than their ranking, okay, you're more, so Patty Pillman is more famous than Leon Edwards and more famous than this guy. He needs to be fighting those guys. Don't confuse fame with skill set. Patty's fame has risen more so than his skill set because of who he is the the all the suicide stuff the message he puts out he's electric on camera he's fantastic on camera he's a good person and he does have a very good skill set his grappling is fantastic but he's not there yet so you guys are confusing a lot of people out there especially the media are confusing fame with skill set and it's okay that patty's not there yet he's young man he has a wow it's a marathon not a sprint but you guys want to sprint these guys to the top. You should have learned from the Darren Till fight when you sprint guys and they're not ready, you're going to ruin that person. You're going to ruin that fighter. It's not the way it should work. But again, pay attention to the media. Watch how mean and savage and brutal they are to a 27-year-old kid who's pursuing his dreams. Pay attention how the media will sway this and manipulate it and make you think that Patty Pim was this aw awful, overrated fighter. Remember, Patty didn't ask for all this. You guys gave it to him, and now you're mad that you gave it to him. You gave him all this attention, and you're mad that he can't fight the Charles Oliveras, the Justin Gaethys, the Makachevs of the world. You're mad, but the same people are the same people that gave him all this notoriety and gave him these, these opportunities and gave him also a platform to get massive. And don't Get it twisted. Fame, talent. He's not there yet. Will he get there? Yeah, he will. If, if they take the necessary steps, I truly believe Patty can be a world champion. He has the mindset of it. And I love that people are saying, Patty's not ready for the big show. Okay, do your homework on Patty Pimlet. He was selling out giant venues 
and Liverpool on his own in Cage Warriors before he got to the UFC. So that doesn't work. The kid shows up when the pressure is on. Now, the Patty Pimlet Jared Gordon fight was more a factor of how damn good Jared Gordon is. And Patty Pimlet, when he faced an adversary in Jared Gordon who's very skilled, Patty got away that made what made Patty special. He stopped doing kind of the unconventional stuff. You know, he, he went back to just kind of striking. He would do some grappling, but really he got in the striking battle, which doesn't, Patty on the feet isn't special. Patty being unconventional, being hard to train for is what makes Patty special. So he got a little bit away from that against Jared Gordon because Jared Gordon's that damn good. So kudos to Jared Gordon. And it was a close fight. And they probably should give the nod to Jared Gordon, but there's nothing wrong with giving the fight to Patty Pimlet. But again, watch how the media and these MMA journalists will paint this picture on how Patty's this awful person. He's overrated. When you guys are the exact same ones who gave him the platform so his star could rise this big. But you're confusing notoriety and fame with skill set. You got to give the kid time to get there. Otherwise, you're going to miss out on something special. You miss out on something special. That's the side we live in. Crabs. Want to tear people down, tear people down, tear people down. Won't be part of it. Wasn't a robbery. I've seen robberies. That's not a robbery. Shut up. But again, watch the MMA media. Watch how nasty it's going to get for Patty Pimlet. I won't subscribe to it. He's a 27-year-old kid. Let's take another little break, kids. Got some ads for you. Because UFC don't stop, won't stop. You got a fight night this Saturday. You got Cannon there versus my boy Sean Strickland, all right? And if you want to bet on the fights, you do it at one place, one place only. I'm talking about DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the UFC. This Saturday, new customers can bet just $5 pre-fight money line on any fighter to win and get $150 in free bets if they do. Check this out. Right now, everyone can earn up to 50% boost when you place the same game parlay on this Saturday's fight night. But guess what? Not only can you bet on UFC, you got World Cup popping. You got the freaking College Bowl Series popping. Pick your teams. Make some money with DraftKings. Download the app. Use the promo code SHOBSHOW, S-C-H-A-U-B, SHOW. Bet $5 pre-fight money line on any fighter to win this Saturday and get $150 in free bets if they do. That's code SHOBSHOW this Saturday at DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the UFC. Minimum age eligible restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Last one, then we're back to the program. This episode of the Shop Show is also brought to you by my friends at Onnit. Onnit.com slash shop. That's right. When you use Onnit.com slash shop, well, what do we get? You get 10% off the best supplements on the planet. You get 10% off the best nootropic on the planet. I'm talking about Alpha Brain. That's right. Now, sure, you can go to Walmart and pick it up, but it can save 10% and get it delivered to your door so you can avoid going to Walmart and seeing the warlocks there. And you can get delivered to your door and save 10% by going to onit.com slash shop. You get the best nootropic on the planet. We're talking about Alpha Brain, over a million bottles sold. And listen, if you don't like it, you don't have to send the product back. Keep the product. They refund your money. That's how positive they are. You're going to love the nootropic. We're talking about Alpha Brain. Over 1 million bottles sold. Fire up your brain. Then also get in shape. Don't wait till freaking January 1st to start going, oh, I'm going to get in shape. It's my year. No. Start right now. Save 10% off. Talking about protein powder, krill oil, creatine, kettlebells, steel club maces, streaming fitness. We got it all. There's no reason to wait. Onnit.com slash shop. 10% off. Now let's get back to the program. Um, and then the main event didn't help. And this shows you how big of a star Patty Pimlet is because he's overshining this, you know, you had a draw for the fifth time ever in a title fight. You had a draw with Jan and Magomed. What's interesting, we had one with Murano and, um, why am I forgetting his name? Murano, who'd Murano face? Figueroa. He, you know, you Moreno, had a, Moreno. Yeah, uh, Moreno, yeah, Moreno and Figueroa, you had to draw there, right? So that's pretty recent um, over the history of the title fights. But with Jan Magomed, I don't have a problem with the draw. I thought there's an argument that Jan won the first three rounds. His leg kicks was doing the most damage out of anything that was going on in the fight. I thought Magomed showed his true colors in that fourth and fifth round going, all right, on the feet, I thought I'd have a speed advantage. I thought I'd be able to get off on him. It's not working. Let's do what got us to the dance, which is his grappling, his ground and pound, his wrestling. 
his chain wrestling from Dagestan. Let's go back to that. So that fourth and fifth round, I can see scoring for Magomed. The 10-8 in the fifth, yeah, depending on how you score it. You know, it's rare they give out 10-8s these days, but apparently they were chomping at the bit to give out some 10-8s. Um, I don't have the fourth of 10-8. I have the fifth of 10-8. But I thought Jan, there's an argument he won the first three rounds. That first round's a little dicey. Really, the fight is predicated off that first round if you're going to give those 10-8s later in the fight. Um, again, nobody was robbed. Nobody was robbed. Um, you have more of an argument that Magomed won that fight, but I'm okay with the draw. I know it's not what we wanted. I know it sucks to come on here today, and for you guys at home that paid whatever it is, $79.99 for the HD pay-per-view, that you didn't get a winner, but a draw's Okay. And I don't agree with Dana going, I never want to see that fight again. They're just not a good stylistic matchup. I disagree. I think there were some nerves. I think there was some feeling out. I think um, you make that a fight night main event, and I think the next fight will be much better. I think they're both going to see what they did well in that fight, adapt, and I would love to see a rematch. I don't like when guys go to draw and there's no conclusion later on. That doesn't make much sense to me. Um, and the chance of that being a draw again very, very little. You know, you had Woodley Thompson, and for whatever reason, they're just not good dance partners. That I get. Woodley's style, Wonder Boy, especially Wonder Boy's style, right? You had that draw in the championship match as well. That's more of a recent one, recent meaning last, what, eight years at least. So that one didn't make too much sense because Wonder Boy can't change his style, and Woodley's a counter fighter, so you had this kind of boring mismatch there, and they did it numerous times, right? But with Jan Magomed, that one seems like if you're going to do a rematch out of any fighters, that would be the one to do it. We need a clear-cut winner there so one of them can move on. You can't just say, stylist, he doesn't work. Let's move on. Well, they're, they're both ranked in the top four. Let's get going here. We need a clear-cut winner. I would book that. I wouldn't have them do anything. Have them recover. Book them in the next fight. Because you already have a fight and Dana announce it. You already have an interim light heavyweight title. Um, against uh, Hill and Glover Texera. So I'd have them win. Whoever wins that fights the winner of that. Pretty easy. You know, pretty easy. But uh, no one was robbed on Saturday night. No one was robbed. Your, your, your anger and your outlash online should be directed towards those judges who never have to take any accountability, never have to show face, never have to explain their judging, never have to explain why they came up with these 10-8 rounds or why they scored you know two rounds for Patty Pimlet, 29-28 across the board, or why one judge had it 48-47 for Jan, the other had it 46-48 for Magomed, then one judge had it as a draw. You know, So it really comes down to that judge who had it as a draw. Wouldn't you like a little explanation just how they came to those conclusions? Because if the judge who gave it 48-47 for Jan and the judge who gave it 46-48 for Magomed gave us good arguments, go, I get it. But to leave us in the dark, we come up with our own theories and it, it just builds this hatred, not towards the judges, which is the problem, towards the fighters. And no one wants to address the elephant in the room where Dana will say, I can't leave it up to the judges. See? Well, no. No, 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 no. no. That doesn't work for me. I've gone on this fucking rant before. That doesn't work for me in 2022 where a fight like Patty Pimlet and Jan, where you go, ah, can't leave it up to the judges. Hey, hey, stop. We have to address this. You have to put some effort into it. And now I know Dana doesn't own the commissions, but if Dana has so much power and the UFC and uh, WME Endeavor has so much power, they could shake the trees a little bit there and hold these judges more accountable. Because when Dana goes, can't even handle the judges, that gives him an out. That's his escape go. Ah, I tell you guys, go for the finish. Yeah, man, I am. Turns out the guy I'm fighting happens to be pretty fucking good. He's hard to get out of there, man. And judging is part of the sport. For us to say the judging's flawed, can't, don't let go of the judges. No, that doesn't work. In no other sport would you guys accept that. In no other major sport would that be an outlet, an, an escape go to go, sorry, don't leave it to the judges. Never, never, ever in the history of professional sports do we just, we're okay with it being completely rigged, completely false. It's just a lot of their decisions, they make no fucking sense. And they, we don't hold any, we don't hold them to 
to be accountable for it. We just go, ah, what can you do? And then we hate on the fighter. It's not a Padley problem. It's not a Jan problem. It's not a Magomed problem. It's not a Jared Gordon problem. It's a UFC judging problem. It's based off, again, it's based off this old school way of judging a boxing match and they manipulate it and kind of try to mold it into the UFC and it doesn't work for us. But yet we keep, and the definition of insanity is keep making the same mistake and not changing. That's what the UFC has been doing since the dawn of time, since the start of the UFC in 1993 in Denver, Colorado. We've done the same bullshit over and over and over and the only thing we get is can't leave it up to the judges. What? What? That makes no fucking sense. But let's throw all the hate at the fighters who have nothing to do with it. And yet, because we're so conditioned to go, shitty judging part of the game, and we just do nothing about it. That is the definition of insanity. Yet we put up with it as fans, as fighters, as managers. As owners of the UFC, we put up with it. Nobody is doing anything to change the judging criteria in the UFC. We just all go, part of the game. It's mind-blowing to me. It is the definition of insanity. Look it up. You keep making the same mistake over and over, the, and it's just on repeat. It's on this loop. And yet, who suffers from it? The fighters that you'd have to pay. They get knocked down in the rankings. Dana White holds it against him, even though he knows the judging's awful. His escape goat is, don't leave it up to the judges. Get him out of there. Well, Magomed's pretty fucking good. Jared Gordon's pretty fucking good. I'm trying my best. Sometimes I, it, it, those guys are just too good to get out of there. At this level, at the skill level of the UFC, in every division from 1 to 50, all of them are fucking talented, man. And they're tough to get out of there. But the escape goat is, don't leave it to the hands of the judges. When's it not going to work for you guys? When are you going to quit reading headlines of these bullshit outlets who throw all this hate towards the fighters? When are you going to start getting smart about things and start, start giving that attention to the bullshit judging? They're the problem. Not Patty, not Jan, not Darren Till, not Taporia, not Bryce Mitchell. The judging. But I've heard nothing about them. Those individuals, we know who they are, those individuals we just give them that out. Judges are going to judge. Ima imagine in any other sport, if you just allowed that, you would never. If the Dallas Cowboys were screwed over by horrible judging, you go, Ugh, can't leave it up to the refs. What? That makes sense. In no other sport would the fan base accept that. Only in fighting. In no other sport do they accept that. Don't let go of the judges. Well, fuck, man. I, they're here to do a job. How How's the judging not changed over the years? We clearly have a problem, yet we just keep dealing with that. Ah, That's all good. That's judging, man. Do something about it. Do something about it. But again, watch the media. They're going to paint this narrative of how bad of a bad person Patty is, and they're not going to allude to the fact the real problem, what everyone should be focused on is the judging. The judging is the issue. Patty has nothing to do with the judging. Boxing, different world. It's corrupt. There's money play there. Judges are bought off. The UFC, I don't think it's that case. I, I think what's going on with the UFC right now, and just let's call it what it is. The UFC's had some, they've taken some L's lately. When, when you look at the the Kraus, the John, is it John Kraus? James. James Kraus? Kraus? Mm -hmm. Look at the James Kraus thing with the insider betting. You know, guys taking falls. That's a black guy. That makes us question the judging and the, the criteria and stuff like that. Um, you look at what's going on now with the judging with Patty Pimlet and Jan. That's a problem. They've taken a lot of black guys lately. Yet they do nothing about it. It's their biggest problem. So now you're going to see the UFC machine defend Patty. They see the rest of the media say that Patty, you know, that Dana, you know, is paying off these judges and all that. So you're going to, let's see who, you're going to see this war, this marketing war. You're going to see this marketing war. It's going to be interesting. I would bet on the UFC when it comes to marketing, but you're going to see a war. That we wouldn't have to deal with this if both of them, the, the MMA media, these high-level journalists, 
And the UFC, if they focus on judging and making some changes, so we just don't go, can't leave the hands of the judges. That would solve all our problems. But nobody wants to focus on the problem that you want to take each other down. You want to shit on Patty. You want to shit on Jan and Magomed. You guys want to do that. You want to shit on Dana. The problem is none of this. The problem is the judging. Every single time, every fucking weekend, we have a problem. Yet you guys keep going back to the well, and that is the definition of insanity. You do nothing to change it. All you do is get online and complain about it. Yet you do nothing to change it. I don't get it. What do you got, Jen? All right. I'll tell you the next fight I like to see for Darren Till. And I don't think they're going to cut him. They're not going to come because that fight was fight of the night. Um, and thank God Darren Till gets another chance. Uh, Sh Shabazian and Darren Till's a fight. And remember, they pushed Shabazian because of his coach and his connections to Edmund. They pushed him as too much too soon, but now he's back on the path. Different coaching, different management. He's getting back in there. I'd love to see him against a, a guy like Darren Till. I think he beats Darren Till. But Shabazian and Darren Till is a hell of a fight. Big step up for Shabazian, even though it's not vintage Darren Till. Big win. Big feather in his cap. All right, so Patty Pimblett had a podcast with Dana White mm -hmm. like a couple weeks ago, and then they went off on Errol Hwani. Yeah. And they're saying something like, it seems like more of a just misunderstanding, but Patty Pimblett, his, his uh, manager, was expecting to get paid for the interview. Yeah. And, and it started so this. Yeah. I've had to deal with Patty Pimblett's manager. He's a great dude. One of the best managers in the game. He actually runs Cage, uh, Warriors. Cage Warriors out there, which if you're unfamiliar with them, you know, Bisbing came out of there. Hardy came out of there. Um, Connor came out of there. Now you have Patty Pimblett. There's some other names. Um, you know, what's the heavyweight stud? Sorry, guys. I took NyQuil last night. My brain is foggy as shit. <laughs> Aspinall. Funny. Aspinall oh, uh, came out of there. So there's a lot of savages that come out of there. It's, it's by far, by far the biggest promotion in Europe, and they create superstars. That's what they do. So I, you know, I took the squad down to San Diego to do a food truck with Patty, and I, I met this gentleman, and first thing he tells me is, you know, how big of a piece of shit Ariel is. And uh, obviously me and Ariel have our differences, and, Ariel talks about living in people's heads. Uh, you don't hear a lot about me and uh, me going after Ariel. You hear him bring me up on numerous shows. I'll never understand that, um, but that is who he is. But I don't engage with that stuff. I, I don't engage with the gossip and stuff like that. And I don't know what went on there, but he, from what I heard, what he, and again, I didn't hear this from Ariel. I heard this from one side. So I just take it with a grain of salt. He goes, oh, we can't stand Ariel. We were in, uh, I forget where they were at. They were in London doing something. Uh, we had something lined up, and Patty's been getting paid to do things. And then Arrow goes, come do my interview. And they're like, well, we'd have to leave this one. They're paying us, so if you pay us. And I guess Ariel just blew up on him about he doesn't pay and stuff like that. And he's like, so fuck Ariel. I'm like, I mean, all right. you know. So there seems to be an issue there. So um, I think the other reason why Patty's getting hate is because he's he's Dana White's guy, right? He's the next guy, and him and Dana goes on a show, and him and Dana are, are you know chummy, and they're boys. You know, I always correlate the UFC to Shawshank Redemption. You want to be Andy Dufresne, right? You you want to be the guy that people root for. When you're friends with the warden who runs the asylum, when he runs the the prison, nobody roots for that guy. So that's not doing any favors, and I I don't think Patty cares. Maybe he does, the uh, optics there. But to have Dana on, you guys are, you have this common enemy in Ariel Hawani. And I don't know all the background to Ariel and Dana. I don't. Obviously, me and Ariel have had issues. That doesn't mean Ariel's a bad guy. I, I do think he's the best journalist we have. I, I've said that since day one, even when we were beefing. Uh, Luke Thomas is up there. You know, there's a few guy, tip of the spear guys, Ariel, Luke Thomas, some other dudes. So I don't know the the depth of Ariel and Dana. I know if Dana has a hit list, if he's off that show, uh, Billy Madison, I remember the guy going to assassinate people and he has the lipstick on, and he's crossing out the names. I'm probably top five on that list, but I'm, I'm, I'm lower than Ariel. He, if he hates anyone more than me, it'd be Ariel. Right? So when Patty and Dana get together and have this common, enemy it brings patty and dana closer together 
and you're not going to get any fan votes off that. That the, uh, the, I think that's where a lot of the hate comes from from Patty. When you when your chums and your buddies and your mates with Dana White um, and what he represents for a lot of guys, whether you're right or wrong, you know you're not going to get any brownie points there. You're going to get a lot a lot more hate. No one likes to see the prisoner with the warden chumming it up, getting extra snacks, getting you know these breaks. That so that's where a lot of the hate comes from. So. I didn't see this. This was uh, Ariel's latest comments. What I was saying was, uh, what I, so, I don't, so who's saying this? So this is Patty. Patty says, what I was saying was Ariel wanted me to do a, a paid gig. Ariel wanted me to not do a paid gig, to do something for free with him. That, and that's what the manager told me. Patty said, and somehow people are defending him. That's it. Simple as I don't even really need to talk about it anymore. That's just a fact. Comes out with this false narrative and said it didn't bother him. Made an hour and 15-minute video about it, so we know it's bothering him. He's actually lied and tried to make himself look good. I guess Ariel showed receipts, though. That's always dicey. Yeah, so there, there's a memo where, you know, you can actually do like a voice memo as a message. Mm -hmm. So Patty's like, hey, I'm, I'm going to be in New York or whatever. So if you want to do something, let me know. So Ariel took that as, you know, an interview, right? But now Patty's saying that no, just he wanted to go get a coffee or eat or something like that. Hmm. But he's and because he considered him a friend, but I guess he now he considers. Oh, he says Ariel doesn't consider him a friend. Interesting. But he considers Ariel a friend. Okay, um, we'll address this after the fight. Me and me manager, don't you worry. You got all the stuff there. He's gonna look like an idiot. Pimlet then addressed the voice much that uh, Hawaii shared on the air, in which it appeared that Pimlet was asked to meet face to face for an interview in 2021. The voice of my when I said, do you want to meet up, didn't mention an interview, Pimlet, Pimlet said, to ha to like have a drink or have something to eat as a friend, but he obviously never saw me as a friend where I saw him as a friend. He only saw me as a pound sign and dollar signs. I just want to, um, I was just comp, com yeah, comedy them. Uh, Pimlet has won five straight. No, um, that was pretty much it though. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's like uh, Real Housewives of the UFC. That's what this is. This drama, so I really don't give a shit. Uh, Errol, you know, what he does, he deals with a lot of fighters. I have to deal with a lot of fighters. There's going to be drama. You know, it's just what uh, the internet loves. And I think if Patty and Ariel just, it, it was, I hate when people air it out on their shows. I'll see, again, for clicks and views, it's a good thing to do that these guys like to do this stuff. But this should be a conversation man to man. This should be a conversation person, and they would squash this and, Ariel would be able to use him, and he he'd be able to use Ariel's platform, which is massive in our sport. So, um, it it only hurts both of them. And let's say Patty comes on to become champ, the same five fights he's fighting for a world title, and Ariel's missing out on that. That's not good. They should squash this. Also, Patty doesn't need to put energy into this into a uh, journalist. Like this is what Ariel does. You know, it's gonna be a tough tough fight. Mm -hmm. And Ariel, again, watch the headlines on MMA fighting, which Ariel is in cahoots with. Those headlines aren't going to be favored towards Patty. They paint a lot of the narrative for the MMA fan base. So it's just there's no upside to this for, for Patty. Now, I'm not saying bow down to Ariel, but it doesn't sound like this is much of a thing. Okay, so he had a paid gig, and Ariel wanted you to skip it to do his. You said, no, you have to pay me. Ariel goes, well, I don't pay for interviews. That, that should have been the conversation. To make Ariel a bad guy, to make Patty a bad guy, Patty's supposed to get compensated off doing another interview, and now to defend Patty, I know it's for a fact, we didn't pay him, but I do know when we reached out to him, my team reached out to him, his manager goes, what's the talent fee? There's no talent fee. We don't pay anyone. Mm -hmm. He goes, okay, all good. Just so you're aware, Patty usually gets paid, but he's a fan, and you, I know you support him, so we're going to do it. Okay. If you would told us, I don't know, 10 G's, I'm like, pass. We don't have the budget. Doesn't make much sense. As much as I like Patty, big interview for us, but um, it's just not the way this, any sport really works. Unless you're doing like a, a GQ piece or something outside of the MMA field, this only builds your brand, you know? So to defend Ariel, too, it's like, no, you know, pay for an interview. And Patty should have just been like, all right, well, let's do it next time or maybe later or the next day. I don't know what his schedule is like, but – Hey, I don't want to miss out on whatever it was 20 G's. Just do your interview. I respect you. I'd like to do it, but I'm going to do this one. Then I can come to you. Or I'm going to do this one. Oh, let's reschedule. Shh, this is easy to figure out. But again, it, it's this cool thing to hate on Patty now, right? Patty. And I'm sure online Patty's a liar and Arrow has receipts. Patty's like, no, nah, you guys are off. You know? Real Housewives of the UFC. 
All right, so there are rumors that Conor McGregor, or there's rumors that Dana White was saying Conor McGregor versus Michael Chandler will be next. Yeah, it was like confirmed. I yeah. saw online, huh? But it's not. He said he never said that. It's just the way the question was asked and how he said. He goes, well, if Conor was fighting right now, then that would be the, you know, something like that could happen, but he's not fighting right now. He's not fighting right now. Who yeah. knows where Chandler's at when Conor finally comes back? We don't know when Conor's coming back. Mm-hmm. That'd be a great fight. Makes sense. All right. Uh, I think Connor's favorite in that fight too. Mm. A little bit more about James Cross. So he remember he he was also a coach. He owned a gym. <coughs> so now he sold his ownership part of it, his share of the gym. Yeah. And uh, since all this stuff happened, remember Alberta and there's another place that that wouldn't take bets anymore. Now Alberta is taking bets again because the UFC actually you know suspended James and mm. cut that guy, Derek Miner. Yeah. Um, I have a buddy who's really close to this situation with James Krause and uh-huh. you know, the betting stuff. I just, we haven't even heard the, the worst of it. Apparently, it gets pretty dicey. Dude. Apparently, it's like straight up like insider trading, guys taking falls. I heard it's very dicey. Crazy. And then I remember, I think it was on Ariel's show. They're saying like James Krause had this membership club on his on his Discord to you know talk about, For betting. Talk about bets. Yeah. And I guess the fee was like fifty bucks a month to like two thousand dollars a month. And he had like over 50 something or 500 something. He's like Patreon for betting, yeah. But that's so much freaking money. Mm-hmm. If I'm James Krause, I just right off in the sunset and keep doing that. <laughs> but did, and I don't know, this is me just asking a question. Was the reason he was so good at this betting, making so much money, because he was giving picks based off inside knowledge of guys being hurt and we don't know. guys taking a fall? Or was he actually good at picking fights? MMA is very tough to bet on. Yeah. Actually, I think it was like over 2,000 subscribers, but that's all gone now, too. Oh, why? He just cut it off. I guess maybe that's part of the punishment. I don't know. I heard, I heard it's going to get dicey for Yeah. It I, seemed, I, it's already getting I heard, crazy. I heard it's going to get dark. From this guy who's very close to the situation, who knows if he's right, but I do trust him. I'm talking prison time, if what he's talking about. So Federal dicey, prison. Di- yeah, yeah. Dicey stuff. Mm-hmm. We haven't heard the last of it. Uh, this is just pretty cool. So Raul Rosas Jr. won on Saturday. And his hero was Robbie Lawler. And I guess Lawler's supposed to fight on that card, but he was injured. Yep. So then. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, that's his hero. And then, hold on a second here. So this is Lawler talking to him on his No one's more disappointed than me to not be fighting this weekend. Would have been nice to meet you this weekend. Um, If you're ever in South Florida, we can train together. Good luck this weekend. That kid is a talent, too. Yeah. Savage. Showed up for his first fight. Look at his cake. 10 years old. When I was 10, my cake was, um, <laughs> and it pissed me off. It was uh, Junior Sale, because I love football. Right? It was Junior Sale getting tackled by Steve Atwater for the Broncos. I told my mom, I said, they're two def- defensive players, mom. They wouldn't be on the field at the same time. She was just eat the cake. I go, I know, but I need you to understand. This doesn't make sense. It's in the details, mom. They, they wouldn't be on the field at the same time. I like both of them. They're both my favorite football players at the time, but you fucked it up. You fucked it up. She's been Junior Seau tackling John Elway. That would have made me happy. Strat her best, though. Shout out to Albertsons and Aurora off I live. <laughs> All right. Uh, so this is, I guess, uh, Bruce Buffer when Darren Till's walking out of the cage. He's, he's I saw that. Up. Darren Till knows the game, right? Mm-hmm. So even though he had a great performance, he got hurt again. He keeps getting hurt, which isn't helping things. He's, he's going to be out sidelined for another Hot second with a torn ACL. Yeah. When he tells Bruce Buffer, I tore my ACL, and Bruce goes, you want me to tell him that? He goes, no. Well, you know damn well that's going to get out, you know? No, he just says, like, uh, he goes, no. He doesn't, he doesn't know for a fact that's why. Yeah. He goes, I think I tore my ACL, and Bruce goes, you want me to tell him that? He goes, no. Okay. Well, there's cameras everywhere, and the mic picked up everywhere. And he told Bruce Buffer, and he's all mic'd up. All right, so I had no idea the Korean zombie was supposed to fight, but – I guess he was supposed to fight Giga Chikadze in in Seoul. Jesus Christ, right? Not, not a great fight for Korean no. Zombie. But apparently he messed up his shoulder again. That's the Korean gods do him a solid. Mm. They've been a tough fight for him. All right. Oh, there's another Darren Till one. I don't know how old this interview is, but I'll just play it for you. It's just a bad uh, interviewer. And Dana White says middleweight championship or Conor McGregor at Anfield as uh, sold out crowd and, and we can watch again. Which would you prefer? Middleweight title. Conor McGregor's a lightweight. 
two rates below me. Yeah. Well, wouldn't happen. You're not willing to drop down. Um, let's, the reason why I mentioned Anfield is because obviously... Turn Jill's out. I know. He's two weeks below me. That makes sense. No, the guy just didn't. Everyone went, right, yeah, that was stupid. Um. <laughs> yeah, this is a quick one as well. Bilal Muhammad said that he he signed a match with Leon, uh, Leon Edwards. For title shot? Let's see. He goes, see you see there, there I, I just signed waiting for Leon. And then Leon said this. Shut up, you bum. You ain't getting a title shot. Who's the bum begging for a fight with a guy on a three-fight losing streak? Oh, he's referring to Masvidal? Mm -hmm. He slapped you in your own country and you didn't do nothing. Get over it. Yeah, I wish they'd give Muhammad the title shot. That'd be sick. This is a another quick one. Dustin Poirier, he had a really bad foot, staph infection. Staph, yeah. Yeah. Thank God he's out of the hospital. There's I was texting that. back and forth with him. Yeah, it looks awful. Look at that Frankenstein foot. Yeah. That Wednesday Adams foot. But yeah, he was able to make it to his daughter's play. Good, man. Shout out to Dustin Poirier. And you saw this too, uh, when Conor McGregor, I guess Joe Rogan on his podcast said something like, if Conor pissed in a cup right now, it would melt. It melts. He said he pissed in a soda cup, it'd melt the yeah. cup. And then Conor responded with this. He goes, Joe looks like his piss melts his knickers in this company that long and never took a fight. Uh, oh, Taekwondo champion or competition? Call oh, the, the cops. cops. Ha -ha. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of this, it's tough. And trust me, I understand it happens to me too. When you're joking around, then people take it as word and think you're hating on the guy. Like he's talking with, I think, plays more dates. And you gotta realize Rogan was a comic before he was a UFC commentator. Or he's on, you know, uh, news radio or before he was on um, Fair Factor. He was a comic. So his first defense, when if it, anything, is to make light of situation, you know, make some funny comments about it. And then unfortunately it gets taken out of context. People think he's serious. There's a funny ass comment. And then Connor sees it. And I'm sure people tagging him all this shit. And then he fires off at him. You yeah. know, that's how this works. All right. I'm not sure what this one is. Connor don't give a shit though. Huh? He just <laughs> fires off and then deletes the tweet. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Uh, you got a good fight night this Saturday. You got a fight night. Uh, where are we at here? Where's this fight night at, Jen? Let's see. Fight night in Vegas, Apex Center. You got Sean Strickland, Jared Cannonier. Uh For Sean Strickland, he wins this one. He's right back in the queue, and I know he wants a rematch with Piera. Um, so for Sean Strickland, this is a redemption fight. I think you're going to get a much better version of Sean Strickland. Jared Cannonier is a savage but I do think Sean Strickland gets it done. I won't pick against Sean Strickland. He mentally, that's his advantage. And I think he learned from that Pierre fight, and uh, he knows what's on the, on the table if he were to win this one. So um, I think Sean Strickland redeems himself. You have Armand fighting as well in the co-main event. Great freaking fighter. Um, yeah, solid car. Drew Dobert, Bobby Green's a fun one. Uh, Jake Matthews is fighting. Julian Marquez. Said uh, Nurmagomedov is a, is a, the next big thing in bantamweight, so make sure you pay attention to that. Good card, salt card. I uh, love the main event. Sean Strickland, Jerry Can there. I'll take Sean Strickland that one though, and of course I'm taking Armin over Demare. Cool. Is that it? That's it. All right, kids. Um, that's it. <laughs> that is it. Your boy has a food truck today. Uh, last food truck we do with Frankie Edgar. That was a fun one. We have a bunch of guests coming up. Uh, we have TJ Dillashaw talking about his retirement, that stuff. I got to shoot that later today with the the recent retired TJ Dillashaw today and um, closing out the year hard. It's been a it's been a fun, interesting year. Start my own network. It's been a lot of work, and I'm excited for next year. And we're just getting started here at Thick Boy. I can't thank you guys enough for being part of it and uh, helping us out and showing support and subscribing and liking and listening to everything we do. So shout out to you guys. Uh, shout out to everyone about a ticket on the road during the Oh He Thick tour. I have a bunch of more tour dates coming up. The only one post right now is I'm in Tampa, I think end of January. So um, that's the first one. Then we'll have some more news for the 2023 tour coming up. Um, we got everything at thickboy.com, the Tiger Thick award-winning Nectar. We got the new Golden Hour uh, Christmas sweatshirts on there. The uh, We just um, replaced, I'm sorry, restocked. The MLB quality Thick Boy jerseys and hoodies and the hats on there. So go to thickboy.com for all that. 
Um, that's it, man. Thank you guys for tuning in. Big food trucks coming up. Going to close out the year um, in a great way. And uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Be nice to each other. All right? Love you guys. I'm out. If you're into thick boys, <laughs> like, subscribe, comment. And God bless America. Well, that's not my big one. Just kidding.